throughout the uh, throughout the presentation. If you have any questions, you can you can type them into the questions box uh, located on the panel of GoToMeeting or GoToWebinar. We will have a question and answer session at the end. So we will uh, we might address your questions during the presentation, but we will definitely uh, respond to all questions at the end. And I'm also recording this webinar today so that that will be made available sometime next week. So at this time, what I'm going to do is, uh, rather quickly, I'm going to give everybody a quick overview of who we are 3HTI, as well as a quick couple slides on the need for 3D technical illustrations. So we are a systems integrator for various software as well as hardware solutions for companies in discrete manufacturing. And we have quite a few of our current customers on the line today, as well as some uh, new newcomers uh, to our webinars. So we want to welcome all the new people on as well as our, our current customers. Thanks for being here today. Um, but anyway, we cover a wide range of products and solutions for all phases of discrete manufacturing, uh, with starting in ideas and design all the way through manufacturing to the retirement of those products. Those products that we, the solutions that we sell, we sell a good amount of PTC products in their portfolio, as well as 3D printing for Mark Forge Stratasys, as well as Steinbickler 3D scanners. We are a systems integrator for Mentor Graphics as well, and other products for machining such as Multi DNC and NC Simul, KeyShot for rendering, Moldex 3D solutions for plastic mold injections, and a configurator for con for Controls Pro Studio. Now, the goal that we have as a company is to help people live better lives by helping our clients create better products and innovate better products. And the whole idea is, is if we can make your life easier by helping solve what's keeping you up at night, um, that will improve your mood, that will improve your productivity in the workplace, and ultimately you'll, be, you'll make a better product, your company will be more competitive, and ultimately that's what we want to do. We want to, we want to help improve your competitiveness and your profitability through helping you live a better life. Now these are some recent wins of customers that we have. This was just within the past three months. Um, and as you can see, there's some very recognizable names on this list and some uh, organizations and companies that need to have results that are precise and results driven. So we are very proud of this list and uh, we're glad that these companies are trusting us to be their partner. And uh, we're working on some very exciting projects that if uh, we have a conversation after this, I can give you some more information about. Um, so anyway, getting into the need for 3D technical illustration. So the overall purpose for today is to provide informational solutions that, that are going to help your, cost, your, your organization communicate complex product and service and parts information quickly and accurately to the people who interact with the product, whether they are customers or service support. And that's going to continue throughout the entire product's life cycle. Now the overall manufacturing companies want to improve illustration accuracy with the most concurrent and latest design changes. They also want to automatically link to a current parts list and present complex procedures in an easy to consume graphical interactive digital format. They also want to author more illustrations of more complex products, but do it in less time. And most organizations are struggling to realize that potential because of, limit, of these limitations. Technical illustrators are not expected to create content from, a, from service or procedures perspective, if they have no expertise, it's hard for them to create that. Technical illustrations provide the ability to rapidly and accurately communicate complex product and procedures information to support teams. They also help with accurate parts identification and improve illustration and animation quality for today's 3D information consumer. The 3D technical illustration solution that we're going to focus a little more on today is, is called Creo Illustrate. Now the value provided by Creo Illustrate, and we're going to see a little more about this product in a demonstration by Bruce in about probably 50 seconds, um, is the ability to accelerate repair time, 
increase parts accuracy, improve training and product support, as well as increasing customer satisfaction. Some technical highlights of Creo Illustrate is the ability to integrate with Windchill's PDM link, as well as the ability to leverage multiple CAD formats, and also the ability to create 3D animations, so you can create animations from your 3D CAD files. You can also demonstrate step-by-step -step procedures uh, for your service contracts, and you can also repurpose 3D illustrations into a 2D format if that is something that is necessary and appealing to you. So at this time, what I'm going to do is I am going to pass controls over to Bruce. And he is now going to give us a brief presentation, probably in about 20 minutes, on Creole Illustrate. So Bruce, I can see your screen. All right. I'm sorry. I was on mute for a second. Uh, I had muted myself while you were talking. Good afternoon. And uh, so, Rob, you said you can see my screen? Absolutely. All right. So basically what we're going to do is uh, kind of run through a demo of showing the functionality of Creo Illustrate and the power it has to create uh, technical illustrations of uh, various sorts. So uh, I basically have a Creo Illustrate screen up. It's empty. The first thing I'm going to do is import some uh, uh, data into it. So uh, I'm going to come in and uh, pick up a uh, Creo assembly that I had uh, exported out into uh, the format needed for Creo Illustrate. And it actually happens to be an Elgin Pocket Watch assembly, 17 joule. And, uh, <clears throat> from about the 1920 era. Anyway, it's an assembly I, uh, I've been building myself, and uh, it's a nice example. So uh, basically, the whole point of Illustrate is to create different illustrations. Notice up in the header, I'm in figure one. So I might want to actually use this view or this figure as an illustration in maybe a Word document. So I can actually uh, copy the current uh, orientation of it. If I go in my set of views, I now I have figure one. Uh, right now, uh, Crew Illustrate allows me to actually uh, uh, view this uh, object in various ways. Right now, we're looking at it in shaded mode. Uh, I can also change it to uh, shaded with edges, in which case it uh, highlights the edges. Uh, I can also uh, control my shading by using the uh, function keys. Uh, this is a flat shaded. I can also do a... Uh, uh, cell illustration shading, what the, is called. Uh, I can do a hidden line removal, colored hidden line removal. Uh, I can do a, a colored sort of illustration uh, rendering. And then also there's the uh, white. I'm just going to go back to the uh, default shaded uh, and kind of work on that. But you can switch it back and forth. So I, I, I currently have a figure. I might want to create a second figure. So I'm just going to duplicate the first one and rename it. And i uh, just call it figure two, for lack of a better name. And all I'm going to do is just rotate this around uh, here and just get a back view here. And now under the home, I'm going to set that to be my current view. So now under the figures, I have one and two. I'll just go back to figure one. I'll duplicate that. Uh, something, and let me just rename it. Uh, something else I can do very easily is create section views. So uh, I'll make uh, figure three a section view. And really on a uh, kind of the most interesting section maybe here is a section running through the uh, balance wheel. Uh, and uh, so that's what I'm going to do. So I'll just kind of resize it so this part's over in this way. Uh, under the ribbon here, there's a sectioning tab, which allows me to turn on a section plane, which I can then uh, pick, grab, and rotate and move into the position I want to. So I'm just going to kind of move it. And I want it to actually go through the right through the middle of the uh, balance staff here. And uh, I can't really tell because uh, I'm zoomed out. 
So uh, neat feature is if I go back to home here, I can actually create an insert in this figure. So I'm going to basically create an insert. Uh, from here, I'll drag it over to here. And now I can actually enlarge what I'm uh, kind of doing a detail in the 2D drafting world. Uh, but I'm going to ex expand this area, and I can actually resize it here. And it looks like I created the section uh, pretty much the way I wanted because the section is going through the middle of this balance staff, and it shows the various, uh, uh, you know, the internals of uh, what's inside there, all the jewels and what have you. All right, so uh, that's an example of that. Let's go back to home. Let's say this is my current view. And uh, now at this point, I have three figures, right? And I can, of course, step through them to see what they look like. All right, let's go back to figure uh, one. Let's duplicate figure one. I'll go ahead and rename it. And, uh, and we'll make this one figure four. And what I want to do now is an exploded view. Now, uh, there is functionality within the software to automatically explode it. So uh, let me just uh, expand it one level. If I go into the uh, tools, there's something called Smart Explode. And if I change maybe my direction to the Y, I can uh, grab all of these objects, add them to the explode set, and it will actually automatically explode uh, and if I'm happy with it, I can uh, keep it, and I could save it. Now, and, and actually, I'm not very happy with it. I'm just going to move everything back and uh, show you how you might actually uh, manually explode it. Uh, to manually explode it, I'm just going to uh, grab objects and move them. So I might start with uh, a couple parts here and then just drag them up in space in uh, basically uh, kind of one axis. And, uh, and since a, a watch is essentially a gear train, I can explode this by just really moving everything upwards okay, in an intelligent kind of manner. So I'll just move that up here, move this up here. Okay. I'll zoom back out. Maybe I'll take uh, next, I'll bring up my uh, barrel bridge, and I'll actually bring these two screws up. And um, uh, let's just move them up uh, about 54 millimeters. Take these two screws, move them up. I'll now go into my train bridge. Uh, yeah, let's, you know, let's just move it there. Okay. And likewise, I could move its screws up. Uh, let's go ahead and move the balance. Balance cock this up. And then I could start moving my uh, the wheels around. So I can move this guy up here, the main barrel is in here, and this uh, fourth wheel, move it up, and maybe take this one. All right. So unlike, now, a cooking, unlike a cooking show, <laughs> I hope everybody appreciates that this is actually live. So we're not doing something that's pre-baked. Right. No, this is live. All right. So uh, something that we might want to do is add some uh, balloons. So I can just start adding balloons to this. And uh, let's see here, let's put one back there. So it's just, uh, right now I'm not doing it in any intelligent order, but uh, But anyway, all right, uh, let's see, under the item list, if I tell it to reset the numbering, I can do that, and I can drag these away so on and so forth. So you can fairly easily create uh, explodes. And uh, let's just uh, leave it go at that. Uh, you also have an item list down towards the bottom that you can export into a CSV file for incorporating into a Windows uh, Word table or document or what have you. 
All right, let's go ahead and go back to the figures. So now I have figure, I uh, actually have uh, four figures. Let's go home, use this current view as a thumbnail. So now it's there. All right, let's go uh, now, let's make another copy of this. Let's duplicate this original. I'll uh, rename it and make it figure five. And what I'm going to do now is uh, go through a disassembly sequence. So um, I kind of did an explode, uh, which is nice for maybe getting an item list. But uh, you might want to have some a sequence of steps to say, well, how would you take this thing apart uh, if you had to repair it? So uh, what we can do is we can actually create some uh, uh, disassembly steps. Uh, so under this uh, figure five, I'll go into my step editor, and I'll just start with step one, just the uh, uh, pocket watch movement as it is, and then I'll add a new step. And what I'm going to do now is start kind of ex manually exploding things again. Move them up. And again, I'm doing this in real time as uh, Rob indicated. So uh, that's my first step. I'm going to go ahead and add a new step. And in this step, those things I want to be removed. So I'll just blank those. So after you remove those items, generally you'd remove the balance uh, <clears throat> subassembly. To get that out of the way, it's fairly fragile. Uh, and uh, I happen to actually repair watches as a hobby, and that's one of my. That's kind of why I have this thing here. Uh, at this point, I'll come in now here and uh, turn off the display of. Uh, oh, yeah, turn off that. Uh, the next thing you would generally bring in is uh, take off the train bridge. So I'll just uh, take this guy and move it up. And then I'll pick the two individual screws and move that. Oh, let's do an undo. That screw and that screw. Sorry about that. Move it up. At this point, I'll order. At this point, I'll hide that guy. Now I'm going to bring in, uh, raise up this guy and these two guys. This one and this one. Move them up here. Now I also, I didn't show up, but if I wanted to, I could also create explode lines. I haven't really been doing it, but you can also uh, create explode lines. Let's just leave them off. Uh, let's uh, say I'm happy with that. I'll do another step, in which case I'll blank uh, the main bridge and these two screws. And then the last step uh, really would be uh, moving up the second wheel. Getting it out of the way. Taking the main barrel, which contains the main spring of the watch. And then moving up these uh, two other wheels. And then basically do another step where I would go and uh, turn those items off. Miss something here. Right. So now I've created a uh, sequence of steps that I can go through that documents how this uh, watch move is actually uh, taken uh, apart and uh, did it relatively quickly but I uh, kind of illustrates that all right now let's go and uh, do one show a, a demonstrate another capability uh, of the software and that is uh, what Rob mentioned uh, animation so let's actually go I'm going to go back to my figures and we're actually uh, make a copy of this figure one I'll duplicate it and just rename it. I guess we're in figure six, I believe. 
Yes. All right. So that's figure six. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn everything off. And I'm going to go into my animation. And uh, basically, I get a timeline down at the bottom of the screen, and uh, which allows me to create an animation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an animation. That's the opposite of what you just saw me to do. In other words, an animation of how you would put this watch back together. And uh, so I will start by uh, uh, highlighting this dial plate. And under the effects, I'm going to tell it to fade in. So over a period of time, I'm going to, when I actually play this animation back, I'll start with a blank screen. And then over a certain period of time, uh, that dial plate will uh, appear. I'm now going to bring in the, uh, I'll grab my third wheel assembly here. And I'm actually telling it to uh, fly in from the positive Y direction. I'm now going to grab my third wheel, have it fly in in the positive Y. I'll take the main barrel, have that fly in, positive Y. And then I'll take uh, the second wheel and have that fly in. Now, uh, down here in the lower left-hand corner, I can actually drag this back, and I can actually play the sequence. So, so far, uh, that's the animation that currently is uh, appearing. Okay. Uh, at this point, I would uh, let's just bring in uh, let's uh, bring in this guy, but not these two, and let's have them. Uh, maybe I can't do that. Uh, I might. Uh, I'm sorry. All right, let's have them fly in from the Y, brings that down, and then I'll bring in the two screws. Okay. Brings that down. Now I'll bring in the barrel bridge, have that fly in from the Y, and then have its two screws come in. Okay. At this point, um, I'll bring in the pallet cock, from the Y and the screw from the Y. And what's left? Uh, let's bring in uh, the ratchet wheel, ratchet wheel screw. And let's bring in the crown wheel, spacer, and then crown wheel screw. And lastly, I'll bring in the balance. And lastly, the balance screw. So let's uh, replay it. Oops. Hmm. Don't know what happened there. That's why this is real time. That didn't work out very well. Now it's coming again. Oh, I yeah, okay. I I uh, I was going uh, on in uh, autopilot, and I probably uh, should have stopped the recording, and it picked me up. Yeah, at one point I backed up and it actually recorded my backups, but anyway. Well, Bruce, I think the overall idea... You got the overall is, idea. Now, at this point, yeah. I can come in here and... Uh, there we go. Now, at this point, I could come in to export it, okay? And uh, I'm just going to export it into... Uh, Yeah, I'll do that. Twenty-five from so it's actually going to generate a, uh, in this case, uh, I guess a Windows uh, movie 
which uh, should only take about 15 more seconds. That's pretty neat, Bruce. Yeah. I mean, the other thing that an organization could do with this this brief movie is they could load it into a uh, into a <clears throat> editing software like Camtasia and do a voiceover with it. So now, if I come into here, here's the movie that I just generated. So hopefully you see my Windows Media Player. Yes. Maybe a little jerky on your ends, but, you know. So uh, we can actually generate animations with this thing. Uh, if I go back to um, the figures, let's just go back here. And notice I have a couple figures. Actually, let's look at this one, figure number three. I can actually, uh, in here, take, and take this particular figure, and I could save that as an image file. So maybe I'll save that as a... Uh, JPEG, and there's already one there, but it'll save over it. And I'm actually going to save this in inches with a fairly high pixels per inch to get a file, fairly high resolution image. And now if I go back into where I was, I should have left the browser open. Uh, and if I go and preview this guy, you're going to see that it's a fairly high resolution uh, uh, JPEG. So that's basically uh, to get the illustrations in to uh, say a Word document. That's how you might do that. Uh, you have other options if you're using something like Arbor Text. So uh, basically, Rob, that's what I have to to show. Uh, why don't we open up uh, for any questions that people might have? Sure, Bruce, thank, thank you very much. So anybody who is on today that wants to see a more specified um, presentation on Creole Illustrate on this product, we'd be more than happy to do that for you. We can, you, you could even send us a CAD file of something that you would like to see, and we can work with you on, on something very specific to your business. Um, Something else I was thinking of, um, I don't know why I wasn't thinking of this earlier, but I mean, part, part of the need to have these kind of, um, you know, really good uh, technical illustrations and, um, you know, information from a, you know, from a consumer standpoint, even if it's something that's going to translate into just a 2D drawing, it needs to be clear if anybody who's a parent that has children and you have to assemble something on Christmas Day, if the uh, if the if the if the directions and the instructions aren't clear, it, it it could it could be a little problematic. So you know, more and more, I'm starting to see uh, companies using more of a 3D um, illustration or a 3D pamphlet to uh, help with the assembly of a of a toy. Uh, but still, every every now and then, you get a 2D one, and it's you know not really as as clear and it can, it can kind of cause cause some issues, but anyway, overall, I mean, um, the whole idea is to help people, customers, and people who work within your organization that support these products, be able to have a clear understanding of how to help people from a service standpoint throughout the life cycle of the product. So, right now, there are no, or there is a question. I apologize. Um, Jim Gilmore has made a statement that this Creo Illustrate, something else we need to, and that's a good point, Jim, this works with all CAD files. If a CAD file is changed, the illustrations will update automatically. 
So that's the neat thing about Creo Illustrate is the fact that it is giving you the latest and up-to-date iteration of that CAD file. So you, you don't have to wonder, oh, is this the right, have these changes been made? As you make changes to the CAD file throughout the life cycle of the product, this will update. And it works with all CAD files, so all various CAD, CAD whether it's SolidWorks or Autodesk or CATIA, it will work with those CAD those types of CAD files and those CAD modeling softwares. So at this time, there are no questions, uh, but I want to thank everybody for, for being on the line today. And just to let everybody know, if you need any more information on Creel Illustrate or any of the other uh, solutions that we offer, 3HTI, engineering solutions, training support, software solutions, feel free to give us a call toll-free at 866-624-3HTI or email us at info at 3HTI.com. So once again, I'd like to thank everybody for being on the line today. For Bruce Bodnick, I am Rob Romanowski. Have a great weekend and uh, enjoy. Thanks, everyone. We appreciate it.